Imagine a place where humans and the natural world blend seamlessly. There's birds singing in the morning, the hum of busy bees in the afternoon, and the familiar sound of crickets on a warm summer evening. You walk out into your backyard with a basket in the crook of your arm, and all around you there are fruiting trees, colorful vegetables, and flawless greens all waiting to be picked for dinner. Your backyard is a Garden of Eden, a place of unparalleled beauty that attracts all of nature's most wonderful and beautiful creatures. Sounds like something out of a fairy tale, doesn't it? Hey folks, my name is Danae. I'm an organic gardener and herbalist here in Maine, and today I'm going to show you three ways to create a beautiful, functional garden. Knowing how to grow your own food is a skill that we should all know how to do to some extent. And it can be hard sometimes, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun and inspiring as well. So my goal today is to help you create a garden that is unique to you and also serves the purpose of promoting better health by providing organic food for you and your family and by also promoting diverse and healthy ecosystems. Now, if you could, don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so that we can reach a larger audience and continue to make a difference. Let's get started. If you want to step into that fairy tale Disney aesthetic every time you enter your garden, then start by embracing your childlike creativity, as this is the key to creating an organic garden that has that touch of magic and whimsy we all know and love. Here's a few ways that I like to bring creativity into the garden. Add creativity to your garden by selecting unique and whimsical plants. I love growing purple potatoes and rainbow carrots simply for their fun colors when cooking. Plants like Swiss chard come in many colors like red, orange, yellow, and even peppermint pink. And who says you can't make a Swiss chard bouquet to decorate your kitchen table? Try funky varieties of decorative gourds that will make the autumn holidays fun and exciting. Plants like chocolate mint and lemon balm add a super yummy scents to your garden as well as to create a fully immersive experience full of sights, sounds, and smells that are totally unique. There are so many varieties of unique edible plants that you will never see in the grocery store, and adding them to your garden will help to create a novel experience that is sure to create wonderful memories. Another simple way to add color and diversity to your garden is to buy wildflower seeds and simply broadcast them into bare soil. If you pick the right blends of annuals and perennials, you will be delighted and surprised by what blooms each and every year. Now let's talk about another creative way to garden, and that involves companion planting. Companion planting is a garden technique that involves planting different crops near each other to maximize the benefits of their interactions. This belief that certain plants can help each other grow better, deter pests, and improve overall garden health has been used for centuries. If done right, it can reduce the need for pesticides, promote diversity, and increase the amount of food that comes out of your garden. Plus, companion planting can also look very beautiful. My favorite companion planting is the Three Sisters Garden. If you are interested in learning everything about the indigenous origins of the Three Sisters Garden and to see a step-by-step -step approach to growing your own, please watch this video here. In short, the Three Sisters Garden is comprised of corn, climbing beans or peas, and squash. Corn provides support for the climbing beans to grow, squash shades the ground to help keep it cool and full of moisture, and the beans add nitrogen into the soil through its root system, feeding both the squash and the corn. It's an efficient way to make use of a small space, and it has a lovely appearance. It's no secret that in fairy tales, especially Disney fairy tales, the characters seem to have a way with animals. They are loving and respectful to their animal companions, and the critters are always sure to return the favor. And while we can't get birds and squirrels to wash our dishes or clean our house, they can offer us other valuable services in our garden. The first thing to recognize is that no creature is all good or all bad. Once you've committed that to your mind, it's time to start making observations about who is living in your backyard. 
Making observations is not a quick and easy process. It takes time and it takes patience. I have been organic gardening for over three years and I still regularly see new creatures that I've never seen before. I find it helpful to take pictures or videos of those creatures and then do a bit of research. What does the insect or animal feed on? What does their presence say about the environment or about my garden? Not sure what I mean by this? Here are two examples. When I first began organic gardening, I used the same method I use to this day. I mulch my garden heavily with grass clippings that I and my husband collect after mowing parts of our lawn. This is a great way to promote healthy soil as it adds organic matter that will eventually feed the plants I grow. But there were some unanticipated downsides. I noticed the first year there were tons of slugs and snails and they did so much damage to so many of my plants. The slugs and snails love to eat grass clippings and the mulch provided a suitable hiding place during the heat of the day and an easy surface to cross to get to more delectable food, my vegetables. It was such a pain that I almost gave up organic gardening in that first year. But then came my saving grace. Frogs. In a healthy ecosystem, wherever there is an abundance of prey, predators suitable for that prey are always close behind. As long as you are not using any harmful herbicides and pesticides, or putting up barriers to deter them or prevent them from entering your garden. You may not notice any beneficial critters during the first year of an infestation, but sure enough, the second year, the slugs and snails were not nearly as bad, and I can guess why. There were suddenly so many frogs and amphibians in my garden that I had not seen years before. I just had to be patient and allow them to find their food source. Knowing that frogs were an ally in my garden, not just for slugs and snails, but for other insect pests as well, I went about researching what I could do to encourage more and to make them a permanent home in my garden. I learned that frogs and other amphibians need moist, cool environments all summer long and that I could provide this type of habitat by creating rock formations in my garden. So I set about adding rock features in our hot and dry field, building raised beds full of perennial herbs to provide year-round cover and insulation without disturbing the soil. But amphibians were not my only garden helpers. I noticed early on that many birds had taken an interest in the insects in my garden. But it was not easy for them to safely hunt, as there was nowhere for the birds to land other than on the ground where predators could easily snatch them up. To solve this, I added vertical posts and perches in the garden. I placed them strategically in problem areas where pests like cucumber beetles, bean beetles, Japanese beetles, and much more were in abundance. Now did doing all of these things stop pests from coming into my garden completely? Not at all. This method of organic gardening is not for everyone, especially if you are not somebody who can easily accept some inevitable losses. But if you are willing to build a relationship with magical mother nature, you will find joy in discovering the diversity of life you have welcomed into your garden. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you a bit of inspiration for getting your own garden started. I love sharing these unique varieties of plants that many people haven't heard of or seen in their grocery stores. It also makes cooking much more fun when you get to work with all of the different colorful veggies. I imagine that it would be great to share with little children as well to get them inspired and interested in gardening. So please, if you can, share this video with any folks that you think would find this content useful and enjoyable. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.